barbershop conversation, guys, feel free to hit the subscribe button. <clears throat> oh, feel free to join the Patreon, too. So I'm just watching Ellie's videos uh, today. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I, I want to put this in perspective just so we can uh, understand what the hell is going on. Riverside is two hours away from Los Angeles, right? And this motherfucker drives from Riverside to the Valley, which adds another hour. If you know L.A. traffic, this motherfucker is commuting five hours round trip for this content. I, I think it's incredible. I, I'm just being as honest as I can be. I, I have free gas. And I'm like, I want to go to the Garcia's gym. I think about it every single day. But I know coming home, it's going to be treacherous. You know what I mean? So I don't go. <laughs> so I just want to give Ellie a shout out, man. I don't see him too often, but uh, I see him fight week. But uh, congratulate. I mean, I, I salute you for that, man. But uh, he asked uh, Mikey Garcia, do you feel stronger? And Mikey Garcia says, no. And then he says, he followed up the statement by saying a muffled statement. I couldn't make it out. And then he says, I feel the same. And I find that kind of odd after training with Snack. Uh, because someone has said he punches like a light heavyweight. Uh, but in every home gym, they're going to tell you you hit stronger than what you really hit. You know what I mean? Everyone has a home gym. I'm not saying Mikey doesn't hit strong. I mean, he doesn't have pop. I'm just saying they always put a little extras on it. And, oh, wow, you hit strong today. You know what I mean? So, But at the end of the day, I'll say this. And and this is when the experience of, of working out pays off where I can have some type of insight where I can share with you guys. I've been on both sides of the fence where I feel strong and I feel weak because I'm, cut, cause I'm cutting weight. Mikey Garcia is at a space space in this camp where he's probably going to be at his strongest because he's not really cutting weight yet but he's on the verge of cutting weight so he may be eating a little healthy he's probably 15 uh, Mikey Garcia may be around 155 160 right now so he's 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 in a comfortable state because he's at a space where I don't know about his camp but a lot of camps like to spar at the weight that they're going to walk in the ring at uh, leading into when they start have to when they start having to cut weight. Uh, so if Mikey Garcia is gonna walk in the ring at 155, I believe he said 155, 157. I believe Robert told me last week in Va in New York. Um, so he's 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 at a comfortable weight. So he's probably at his strongest uh, before he starts cutting weight. Maybe another two weeks because he doesn't have to cut much weight, you know and. Uh, uh, he works out hard. He did 42 rounds today, 42 plus rounds. You know, that's a combination of, you know what I mean, getting his hands wrapped in between. He may take a round off to uh, to uh, get wrapped, may take a round off to put his gloves on. Then he may take another round, take his gloves off, and then do the speed bag, et cetera, et cetera, and then spar. You know, so he may have to go to the bathroom. And so the clock is always running. But 42, I've never done 42 rounds. The most I've ever done is like 33 in a day. I believe. I think that's my record, 33. And uh, that's intense. But I'm not changing anything. You know what I mean? I don't count the rounds where I sit down. I, I only count the rounds where I'm on my feet. And um, that's impressive. You know, that, that that's really, really impressive. But what I found odd is he doesn't feel stronger. You know, I thought that because I would say he left about two or three weeks ago. And... Uh, um, he doesn't feel stronger. And, oh, now now let me get into the experience. Oh, that's what I was leading into. I apologize for, for drifting left. When you hit the bag, every fighter feels it. And I'm a novice at this. But I hit the bag damn near every day. When I'm at 165, 166, when I'm in between that range, I have pop. When I'm at 160, I feel athletic without the pop. You understand? I feel way more agile. I'm slipping. You know what I mean? I'm dancing around the heavy bag and stuff like that. You know what I mean? I can, I can uh, 
The double end bag is way more fun for me at 160. When I get to like 155, uh, I'm like on the verge of like, man, do I really want to be here? When I get to like 150, 155, I've gotten I've gotten that low before, you know, and uh, don't have no power. Uh, my abs are popped out like 9,000. If I take off my shirt, I'll look like, you know, like a Floyd Mayweather, like a, you know, like that Shane Mosley, Floyd Mayweather way in, you know what I mean? Stuff like that. But I have no, no oomph, you know what I mean? I have no get back. You understand what I'm saying? And, 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 and I said all that to say this. A fighter knows when he's strong. A fighter knows when he has that pop, that pop coming off. You know what I mean? Where he's just shooting off your shoulder. Where it's just, it's just shooting. You know, you get a full extension, you're turning, and it's just, it, it, it feels great. You know when you're having a great day in the gym and you feel like, and you feel like you feel stronger. And, and you have honest conversations with yourself. Like, you understand? You have very honest conversations with yourself. So, um, um, so I said that to say I'm, I'm shocked that he said I'm, I'm, I'm shocked. He said he didn't, he didn't feel stronger, you know, because he's obviously on the, um, on the, um, on the supplements cause he's promoting them. So I, I see him promoting the supplements. So I'm assuming that he's taking them on a daily basis, which, which support what he did at snack and supports what he's doing down here in Riverside. So, uh, um, but I'm interested to see, I, I, I enjoy the videos, man. Like this is my fight. I'm really, really excited about this fight. I'm, I'm excited to cover this fight. Um, uh, we got two great guys walking into the ring. I'm actually, and truth be told, ever since, uh, Robert Garcia, uh, I saw that interview with Robert Garcia about his daughter missing, he missing his quinceanera. I've gotten like, like there's a, because I, for those of you who don't know, the very same day or the day before, I apologize. Uh, my daughter walked for the first time on her own. She got up and I wasn't home. I was in New York and I felt a certain kind of way. You understand? Like, you know, like, you, like as a parent, as a father, you're not supposed to miss these type of moments. You know, and I was beating myself up a little bit, you know what I mean? And, you know, I kind of hit it well. I had my poker face throughout the day, but inside it, it kind of bothered me. And when I saw that video of Robert missing his daughter's cantina, because we have, we want to provide for our family, I, I kind of like, uh, like, uh, we shared a moment of empathy for, for each other. You know what I mean? We gave, we gave each other the knuckles and, 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 and there's a level of admiration as a man, as a protector, as a father, you know, you have when, when you see another man doing his job for his family, you know, and, and, uh, so there's a level of respect that grew in me as it relates to the Garcias, which leads me to my point. Cause I've never felt this about the Garcias. I've always respected them. You know, I was fortunate enough to, to spend about 25 minutes with big G. That was my, and believe it or not, that's my first time interviewing big G. You know what I mean? I, I, I've always been afraid of, not afraid, that's the wrong word, but for the sake of this video, about the uh, uh, the uh, uh, language barrier. And and I knew if I just interview Robert, it'll be it, there's a parallel between the two. But I enjoyed listening to Big G. Like I thoroughly, I was a history major in college, for those of you who don't know. So I'm big on like documentaries. If if you go through my YouTube timeline, my history, you'll see me falling asleep like damn near every third day to some sort of documentary. You know what I'm saying? So uh, uh, I'm 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 uh, I love first person stories. I love people. I like when uh, movies where the person that the movie's about tells their story and they narrate it through the process. Like I just saw Thirty for Thirty, Deion Sanders. I I love that he told the story. I like when they're alive and they can talk and they can speak and they can move. I like that type of stuff. So, but as I digress into the Garcias, I, you know, th th there's a, my level of respect grew from, because I've never been this intimate with them. I've never like had to cover these motherfuckers. I say motherfuckers loosely. Like I never had to carry these men, cover these men every weekend I'm covering them. So it's like, 
I'm interviewing them every week. So now they're on my consciousness. You know what I mean? It's like, remember like two years ago where Virgil Hunter was having fights every week? And I was interviewing Virgil Hunter every weekend. You know what I mean? And and you grow some level of, level of respect and familial, <clears throat> familiarity with these men. You know what I mean? And, and uh, which leads me to Earl Spence. You know, obviously it's not changing my pick on this fight. You know, but but I but I, I I will forever say I wish we got more content out of Earl Spence, and I know they down there in the dungeon. I know they working. I know they 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 coming up with their concoctions. They coming up with their game plan. They working really 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 hard. I understand all of this, but as this fight is promoting itself, and these fighters are promoting it, these new boxing fans will fall in love with Mikey. Will fall in love with the Garcias. Because Earl Spence is not promoting, he's not, well, I should say he's not promoting. He's probably doing a lot of promotions. He's traveling, doing all this. He's, uh, he's laying silent. And, and, and that's, his, that's his personality. I respect all that. But when you got a pay-per-view, it's, it's, it's a different animal. It's completely different than you just showing up on a Fox Saturday night or a Showtime Saturday night where there's a built-in promotion. You know what I mean? And, um. Uh, they're from, you know, but pay-per-views is you got to convince people to spend that $80 on March 16th. It's not easy. It's not easy when gas prices are going up and uh, people literally, I'm mailing in my taxes March 15th. For real, I'm post dating it. They'll give you that weekend. So I'm literally going to post, I'm literally going to mail my taxes in on March 16th. And people say, why? Why are you going to wait that long? Because I got to pay. I'm going to get the little bit of interest I can from my bank. Whatever it is, it's going to be a couple dollars, obviously. But it's just the mindset of practicing that. And I'm going to mail it in on March 16th. Because I, we pay every every year. We don't get money back. So so I said that to say, people that, that half the people that can afford to go to this fight, they got to make a decision. Because like me and my family... We're writing a check March 16th, March 15th, March 14th, that week that we're, we're not happy about. And it's going to make, a, it's gonna make a, a great dent on our savings. You understand where I'm coming from? So I, I said all this to say, we got to start promoting this fight. Even if Earl Spence did a video every two days, every three days, you guys know how much admiration I have for Earl Spence. I think he's awesome. I think he's great. I, 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 I believe, and Derek James is a gentleman too, so... They're not, they're just used to working really, really hard. And you guys, and, and we typically enjoy the results. They're undefeated, right? He's only had one hiccup, and that's Jamel Charlo. Out of 50 fights, 50, 60 fights, if they had together, I don't know how many they've had. Well, he didn't have Jamel the entire time. Coach Shields had him. So, um, but I said all that to say this. I wish we got more from Spence. Man, I want to, and, and, and obviously it's from a selfish perspective too, because I'm picking him in this fight. You know, but uh, I uh, I'm enjoying this Garcia. I'm being real. I'm enjoying this Garcia journey. I'm actually going to cover the Garcias on. The, well, I don't know if he has any other fighters on the ninth, but he has a fighter Ramirez fighting at 140 for the championship on the tenth from Fresno. I'm actually going to Fresno to cover that fight. So, and again, it's going to be Robert Garcia on Barbershop Conversations. And every I've gotten, and just to put this in perspective. I'm going to tell you how many subscribers, new subscribers I've gotten this, just this week, you know, or in the last 28 days, it says, right? The last 28 days, I've gotten 3,145 new subscribers, right? And the reason why I say that is because half of these people are new boxing fans, or a percentage of these young men and young women are new boxing fans. And what am I talking about? The Garcias. I want to talk about Earl every goddamn day. I just don't know what he's doing. You know what I mean? I, I go to his stories every day, and and uh, he's uh, it's, it's nothing really about boxing. It's just him hanging out with his friends and his family and his beautiful daughters. His, by the way, his daughters need to be doing Kmart commercials or or like, uh, you know, those kid uh, Gerber commercials. God, he has a beautiful family. And uh, um, um, But as I digress... Uh, I wish we got more from, I wish, I wish, Blu-ray 
if you watch this video, Derek James, if you watch this video, Earl Spence, or if you're a part of Team Spence, please tell them just to post the workouts on social media so we can say, hit the heavy bag with 10 strong punches. And, and then it's going to get the media buzzing like, oh, man, he's a uh, damn. It's no way in hell Mikey Garcia can stand up to that shit. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, man, I, uh, I'm excited to cover this fight. I get there March 12th at 4 o'clock. Um, sun, Saturday, I'm working on something. Same thing we did for Deontay Wilder. So Team Spence, uh, anyone in Team Spence, uh, we're going to do a breakfast sometime Saturday. I'm working on it right now. I literally just put it in motion this weekend. Uh, I have some friends down in Dallas who maybe we'll just collaborate and do something uh, for the boxing fans that's coming down for the fight. I'm excited. So stay tuned for that. Uh, maybe I'll have something for Set in Stone in like two, two and a half, maybe three weeks. Hopefully by the first. You know what I mean? So we can start gearing towards it and I give you guys a price point for how much it's going to cost. So, but anyways, man, barbershop conversations. Uh, um, uh, yeah, man. So, so if you know Earl Spence, you're a sparring partner, you work out with him. Uh, uh, holla at him and tell him just post on Instagram. It could be him just hanging out with Jamel Charlo in the gym. It could be him and Derek doing pranks on Derek James. I don't have to be them working out, but I I, I think to promote the pay per view, I think uh, we have to uh, start. People got to see him, and seeing is believing. This is a social media. 60 seconds or less society, you know, and that's the society we live in. So I'm going to be there. I'm telling everybody Earl Spence is, Earl Spence is going to win this fight. I'm telling people uh, Mikey Garcia can beat everyone at 135 and quite possibly 140. I think he's the best at 35 and 40 right now. You know, um, um, I think 147 is a bit too much, you know, but I'm hopefully I'm engaging in enough of you guys and convincing you guys to, buy the pay-per-view that night we got david benavidez on the undercard and um well, I, I saw something i don't know if it was set in stone i got a text but i don't know if the other fighters are set in stone but i have david benavidez on the undercard i just don't know is it confirmed he's fighting jaylion love uh or um anyone else but anyways man i said all this to say this i'm enjoying the coverage that ellie's doing on on the, the Garcias and Tank, and I'm, I'm I, w I wish we got some more from uh, Earl Spence from a selfish perspective, and I don't want him to miss out on his money, because I know that I know it's gonna sell. In Dallas, I just want the people in the Dakotas. I want the people in Seattle, Washington. I want the fight fans in Flint, Michigan, and Detroit, Michigan, and Ohio, and Delaware, and Maine, and Greenland. To know about this fight. That's all. Anyways, man. Barbershop conversations, man. Feel free to hit the subscribe button. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace.